Welcome to another episode of Bible Smack Vlog. Alright. Um, today we're doing like a, um, I'm giving a response to a, um, channel called, uh, Christian Monotheism. I guess they got a website, ChristianMonotheism.com or something. I would. But, uh, I saw this on the net and I wanted to kind of address a couple issues. He, he has five... Uh, questions he has for any of us who hold to that weird doctrine called the Trinity. And um, basically go through those things. Um, most Protestant ministers who are called fundamentalists hold to things that are called the fundamentals of the faith. And these doctrines that if you were to construct a Christian worldview, the Christian worldview wouldn't work if you got rid of these doctrines. And one of those is the Trinity. And other Christian groups hold to that as well, uh, such as uh, the Roman Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, and so on and so forth. Now, there is one thing I do want to, I'll get into a little bit more detail a little later, but there are distinctions when we talk about um, the Trinity and stuff like that, that different belief systems have slightly different versions, okay? And so we got to remember that that not everybody has the same understanding of the Trinity, and so they argue different things. Um, this guy's first question was, Jesus was a Jew, right? I want to say yes. Jesus <laughs> was a Jew. Amen. All Amen. right, and one of the things he does is he kind of says, well, the Jews were monotheists. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't care if the Jews are polytheists. Why do I say that? Well, because the Old Testament is the Word of God that God used the Jewish people to work through. But you see, Jewish people are like other people. Some are right, some are wrong. Uh, there's many Jewish books, but they're not in the Tanakh or the Old Testament. Like how I said that, Tanakh. You see, I can do that. All right, so what I want to know is I want to know what the Word of God says in the Old Testament to the Jews. But he uses this as proof. He uses Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. And what he's basically saying is that the Jews were Unitarian, so therefore uh, Jesus was a Unitarian. Now he'll say monotheist, as in he believes in one God, so the Christian must believe in three. My only problem with that is, is uh, go to a recognized church, okay? I mean, just go to a Baptist or a Pentecostal, like a Catholic or Wesleyan, whatever. I mean, Methodist. You know, you go to any one of these, you know, mainstream churches and tell them that you believe that God is three different gods and see if they agree with you. Typically, they'll argue with you that there's one God. Even if their doctrine says Trinity, they'll say there's one God. So they don't believe in three gods. Now the Mormon church, the uh, or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, typically believes that there are three gods. And eventually they believe in polytheism because people become a god. But, you know, they separate the Father from the Son. And I think that they have the Holy Spirit of the impersonal force. I'd have to go back and check. But basically, you don't have one god. In fact, God impregnates Mary there. So... Basically, um, Christians believe that the Trinity means one God and three persons, okay? If I'm talking on my cell phone, okay, if I go and I call my homie and friend of the end, Jeremy Mailer, uh, me and Jeremy are talking, you're hearing a conversation between two persons, but how many bodies are there? It's just me, okay? It's me with a cell phone, but you hear two persons. There's a difference between a person and a being, okay? Uh, you can make the argument like, well, maybe God's like one body with a split personality, but a split personality is not complete. Because God is all-powerful, He is complete. So, Jesus can do something, the Son and the Holy Spirit can do something, and God can do something, but there's still one. Uh, here was Here's that proof text again. Uh, 1228 uh, of Mark, he says, And one of these scribes came, and having heard them, reasoning together, and perceived he had answered, them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's thinking, aha, 
Jesus said, one Lord, he's a Unitarian. And when we look down, it also says, um, Jesus says something good about the guy. And he says, when Jesus, uh, verse 34, when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any questions. So he likes what this guy said. But there's one little thing that he's forgetting, okay? Not only did Jesus agree with the scribe, but let's look a little bit earlier. Earlier, the scribe had agreed with Jesus. Um, verse 26, I think it is. It says, And touching the dead, and that they rise, have ye not read, this is what Jesus says, Have ye not read in the book of Moses, how in the bush God spake unto Abraham, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Alright, and you see, it says, uh, verse 28, one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together, perceived that he had answered them well. So, you see, the scribe is agreeing with this idea of the God of Abraham and, notice that, and the God of Jacob, and the God of um, Isaac. Okay, I got that reverse, Isaac, Jacob. But basically, when you look at that passage as it is in the Old Testament, Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, Exodus, uh, I think it's chapter 3, uh, verse 13, maybe, or 6, just, just look at chapter 3, you'll find it. But uh, basically, when it says the God of, the God of, the God of, it could have said the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Well, Jewish theologians and scribes have said there's a, a sense in which God is kind of coming out with a different personality which each person. You have three persons there. Abraham, which in Hebrew means the father of many nations. Isaac, a son who was miraculously born and set forth as a sacrifice. And then Jacob, the guy who wrestled with uh, a spirit of God and received the blessing. Okay? Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, right there. And Jesus is bringing this out to him. Okay, the next thing, he says, where is the verse or chapters of the book that simply state the doctrine of the Trinity? Okay. First John, chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And it, then it says, and there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Um, if we have received the witness of men, that's the witness of men noticing the spirit, the water, and blood, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. So it has to be more than one witness, because on the testimony of two witnesses is when you'll get a accurate record. And so basically it says there in verse 7, um, there are three that bear record, okay, they've got this record recorded down, and, um, it says, um, these three are one. So that's the Trinity. And they say, well, that verse wasn't originally in the Bible. And so you look at the modern translations, and they'll rip out verse seven. They'll have verse, <laughs> they'll, they'll literally have, you look, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, or nine, and, <laughs> you know, kind of gone from there. And then there's a couple words out of, um, I think it's verse 10. And I'll have to go over that later, but you'll also notice, um, if you were speaking Greek, that there's a uh, feminine and masculine quality to the language, and it has to kind of flow just right, and that the grammar will be way off on that. Okay, and let me go ahead and I'll speak on this uh, on our second part.